All right, so Samsung for 2022. This is the Neo QLED line. Uh, we're, we're not really going to talk about the, the non-Neo QLEDs today. Uh, but we got pretty much just everything that was the QN whatever A is going to the B model this year. And now I think that's going to really kind of make people a little uh, confused when they see it at first. Because they're going to think like, oh, B model, so it's worse than the A. But now that's not the case. Um, they're just going up a letter. So the QN900B, the QN800B, and the QN700B are the 8K. The 4K, the QN95B, the QN90B, and the QN85B. And so the 8K go from 65 to 85 inches. And the 4K are 55 inches up to 85 inches. And there may be a QN90B that is 43 inch. And they should have a 50 inch as well. Though nothing was confirmed on that. So I'm going to move on to the next slide so we can talk about Samsung. And... Um, a big deal that they are kind of making with this uh, Neo QLED this year is the shape adaptive light technology. And so you can read on the screen what it does here. Uh, it sits as pretty much analyzes lines and shapes and surfaces to control the shape of light from the quantum mini LEDs. And it enhances brightness and accuracy of all shapes on the screen. So this is a good sign that they're taking a look at the way their backlight control works because I think that has been a weakness with um, Samsung in the past that they could have better um, backlight control when it comes to getting highlights to stick out a little bit more. So hopefully this helps with that. Next one is going to be the 144 hertz display. And so this is really going to only benefit PC gamers, but it's the first time we've seen this in a consumer-based TV. Like if you're looking at this at 50 inches, compared to a 48 inch LG C2, you might consider this if you're a PC gamer now. Um, it's nice to see this this happening. TCL is also putting 144 hertz display on their TVs this year. Next one. And so, I don't know if you've seen this, but they are improving the frame. And the rumor is that the improved model is not the Q60 anymore. It's going to likely be the Q80. Um, and that's not really confirmed yet, but that's the speculation out there. Uh, it's going to be a brighter display and it has an anti-reflection layer and the anti-reflection layer is supposed to be really good and um, it allows you to see the texture in the artwork and stuff like that. I think that's really cool. I'm not really interested in the frame, um, so to speak, but it is something worth noting since the frame has kind of been a carryover from year to year to year and nothing really changed on it. And this year it changed, so... I just wanted to note that. You got anything else to add on the frame? I uh, just hope that they don't switch it to an ADS. Yeah, it'd be interesting if they did that. I would not be surprised if everything under the, you know, the flagships were ADS. Um, the QN95B is a model that should be coming to the U.S. Um, I think that's well, pretty interesting, and it's going to have the Infinity One bezel. I was gonna say, I think the only difference will be the Infinity bezel and the One Connect box, and everything under will be the One Port again. That's the only you thing think I can so? really think they would. That's so, the only thing I think they they could logically separate the ninety five from the ninety with. So my thinking is, there's a possibility that they do have all four ports on all these TVs. I know that's crazy to say, but um, that might be a possibility. And... If they do, I think they'll just reserve the one connect for the infinity bezel, and then just have the other ones then built into the TV. Yeah, the QNEDs. So there's gonna be. Four different, no, five different models this so, year. I did see mention of the 95 on the thing that I post on my community tab. But then when I went to investigate further about the QNEDs, I found nothing confirming the 95. So I don't know if that's a different region TV or something coming later in the year. Uh, but I couldn't yeah. see anything about a U.S. launch for the 95. It could absolutely um, be that because they're so close mm -hmm. and it doesn't make yeah. sense, you know. Um, mm -hmm. There's no doubt about that. There's some regions that get more options for whatever reason. And so that's why I wanted to point out, though, that the A9 Gen 5 is only going mm -hmm. to be on 8K once again. So yep. I, I know there was some people saying that it might be on eight on the 4K. And I was thinking that would be cool if that's the case, but it's not. So mm -hmm. sadly... They still go with the A7 Gen 5. Mm -hmm. And so I do think that's a big mistake. Once again, I don't know why they do that. Uh, just to cut costs on it. And 
So something I saw too, the 85 and the 80 um, very well could be just mini LED without quantum dot or vice versa or whatever. It seems that the 85 is replacing the nano cell and the 80 okay. is replacing their base, what they would just call the UHD, whatever, like what was under nano cell. Yeah, that's what it seems that they're just going to have QNEDs be their entire LCD lineup. But uh, all that was said uh, from them that I could find on those was just reduced zone counts, which could mean a lot of things when you're starting at 2400 on the high end. So it's too early to know exactly what 85 and 80 is going to be like, but I think that they're just either replacing or whatever their really low end LCDs. I don't know. The QNED is one of those ones where it has potential, but I feel like when they keep putting this processor in it, I'm going to go back to, I'm just going to say it like, that's just a mistake. Like you're nobody's going to take your TVs as seriously if you put a lower processor in it. It's because this is like the same budget processor that goes in the a series and people think that's a joke. All right, let's uh, move on to the LCDs. Uh, man, this was something I was really excited about. The Z9K 75-inch and 85-inch mini LED backlight master drive. The X95K 65, 75, and 85-inch mini LED backlight master drive. And that's the 4K flagship. And the one I mentioned before was the 8K flagship. So, huge deal. Uh, mini LED, I really was hoping. And I said, I think this is where Sony's going to go. And they did it. I didn't expect the backlight master drive though. I didn't expect that. So it's cool. I'm glad that's back in some capacity, if, <laughs> even if it's not the same. Um, they they are, they like it well enough to call it the backlight master drive, and mm -hmm. it could just be a marketing thing that they're like, "I right, we had this before. Let's just call it that again. Let's make it smaller." Because uh, I don't know if you've seen the panels; they look really small. I was just gonna say I don't know if you had seen the image, but. Yeah. It's not as big as like previous ones. It's mm -hmm. not, you know, that big, but it's right. still big for an yeah, LCD. It... It's still like at least that thick. It's probably three inches thick, two and a half inches thick, something like that. So mm -hmm. it's not super thin, but it's not massively thick either. Yeah, I'm really excited about this because I do think this is what Sony really needed to do. They needed to revamp their LCDs because what was working in the past, it it was good but they could do better and i feel like now they have a chance to be the best lcd tv in 2022 yeah yeah i think the one tv that uh sony interests me the most in was the x95k mm -hmm. and i would go for it in 85 inches possibly but the media tech chip said right um, so i just i can't uh that said What's interesting is at the next shootout, it's going to be earlier. It's going to be June or July, okay. um, which is before QD OLED comes out. So, what are they? Going to, are they going to have the A90J again, or are we going to have the X95K? I think they should go with the X95K at the shootout. The bottom of this list, the X80 and the 85K, that turns me off of Sony as a whole. That they are right. still putting the X1 processor on those. Oh, is it the X1 that's, still? Yeah, that's how many years yeah. using that. It's same not even processor. the X1 Ultimate. <laughs> Yeah, you know, just X1 and the 85K still being marketed as 4K 120. Guarantee you, it's going to be half res at 120. Right. If it's the so, same thing, it might just be the same TV. Yeah. So. Now the X90K. That's you know, a lot of people one. are saying that it's the 90J carried over. I think they're actually going to kind of mix the 90J and the 95J to make the 90K. I think they could give it the 60 zones at a 65 inch instead of 32, mm -hmm. like the 95J had and increase the brightness to that thousand nits like the 95J had. Um, and then I don't know if you saw, looked closely at the body of it, but it's a completely new build. The 90J had a horrible build quality. Yeah. Um, this looks a lot better. It does. And it was making me think that the X95K is going to be way more expensive than the X95J. And the X90K is going to go up a little bit itself. So I think like the X90K could be... Uh, almost close to what you would see a QN85 launch at. So I th I think that's where I think Sony's looking at. So Hisense talking about the U9H and the U8H 
are now mini LED. So I was talking a little bit about this earlier before you were on, and I think that this is a good thing because UAG was close. It was close. It had problems with the uh, you know black bars and everything, but making it a mini LED will help it a lot, I think. And so I'm pretty interested in seeing what what Hisense does with this. They say it's going to be 1500 nits. Mini LED is everywhere, and it's here to stay. And I said that when the QN90A was out. It's like, this is it. This is the better LCD technology, and you're going to see it more and more because it is a good backlight technology, and it's going to give you a good amount of dimming zones. It's going to give you really good black levels. So we can expect the U9H and the U8H to have great black levels. And they had good black levels last year. It was just the black bars when watching movies was the big issue. And so that's this is really interesting to me. And I, I think Hisense would be one to keep an eye out on in the lower end. Yeah, it's just the... Processing. <laughs> it yeah, always processing. Comes back to that, um, right? But no, I was going to say, it's like we went from G or to H to, to now H again to G or whatever, like H yeah. to G to H. Just, oh. I get what you're saying. Because yeah. you think of that H9, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the right the way I they see. named the 2020 models and then changed it for 2021 and now 2022. Yeah, but... um Yeah. Again, it, it's high sense. Um, I I hope that they can improve their processing because, I mean, it's like high sense is kind of doing what um, Sony kind of does where they're they're doing things right and then they have these areas that they need to improve. And they just don't listen mm -hmm. to the consumers of what they need to improve on. And then they just keep going on whatever track that they're on. All right, TCL 2022. They're uh, doing 144 hertz refresh rate on some of their TVs. They have true cut motion. Uh, and then the X925 Pro 8K OD0, super expensive, cool looking TV. Um, one of the like coolest looking TVs I've seen. Really high expensive price tag though. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what people think about this. The people that get to review it, I wonder if it'll, you know, come in comparison to what the QN900 can deliver. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's technically the same panel as the 900. Um, Standard, what has me more interested is the one below it, the 98 inch. I mean, that's basically the same thing as the QN98, 98 inch, but from mm -hmm. TCL, and it's half, literally half the price. Um, and the question is, you know, how is its local dimming and D, uh, DSE and things like that? But yeah. if someone wanted a big, bright TV in their living room and didn't want to go with a ultra short throw that wouldn't be nearly as bright, well, there you go. <laughs> right. Um, but another problem for me with TCL is motion. Will TrueCut fix that? I doubt it because, again, it's content dependent. Right. And I just don't have a lot of faith in TrueCut or anything. I mean, the, the whole point of filmmaker mode was also to fix the motion, but all it does is disable all the stuff. So, you know, I just, I, I don't see how true cuts really going to do anything for people who are film purists that want right. 23.976 Hertz. 